Jotai. 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 It's fun to say um, and hopefully fun to use. Okay. Async work. Hello there. Thank you very much for joining me. Today, I'm going to be speaking about a library I've not had much of a chance to play with yet, but um, seems really interesting. Uh, a nice, simple, flexible state management solution for React apps. Uh, it's called Jotai, uh, which is fun to say, obviously, which is very important when it comes to uh, libraries. But the most important factor is it's got a wicked logo. This little guy, I guess that's Jotai. He looks like a dude. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so I've gone over to the GitHub repo. This Poimanders. Pum, 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 yeah, they say they're an open source developer collective, um, but they've got some really great libraries. If you go through some of their other repos, which I'm sure I will go through at some point, um, maybe on this uh, medium, they've got some really cool solutions out there. Interesting stuff to look at. Uh, moving swiftly on. So Jotai, pronounced Jotai, means state in Japanese. There you go. There you go. That makes that actually does make sense now. Um, sounds like they got the word first and then they've built the character around it, but that's that's amazing. It's fun to say. Jotai, like it. It's very minimalist API. Um, you'll see in the example, it's actually not re React specific, the core of the library. It just gives you this primitive called an atom, which you can basically store a value in. Um, as, and as we'll see in this video, you can do... Uh, asynchronous work or any work inside these atoms um, which is very interesting here they've got in their first example they're just storing like a number um, or a string or a list or an object all very nice then they've got this hook which uh, works with react which allows you to um, convert the atom into a stateful react centered variable cool good stuff um, so they've got that classic count set count example um <clears throat> which the react docs and every react tutorial ever always seems to go through um which seems to work just as you would expect very nice then we start getting slightly more interesting so we've got these computed values so you can combine atoms together so you could say one one atom which is just a very simple value is then used by another atom and then you subscribe to that second atom so you can sort of build these like almost pipelines of data um, around your around your state which is really cool so they've got this like getter where they're then getting the value from a different atom and then they're doing some work on top of it very cool here we go another example creating multiple atoms you could go through this read me without me really if i've sort of piqued your interest what i'm really trying to get to though is the derived async atoms. So one of the most common things that you end up having to do in React is, or any front end development really, is just calling APIs, calling a, making a HTTP request, getting the response and doing something with it, like manipulating the data that comes back, displaying it to the user usually, um, that sort of stuff. It's an asynchronous operation. You trigger it off and at some point in the future that's gonna come back and you're gonna wanna use the result of that data. Very bread and butter stuff. So there was actually a bit of a heated discussion on Twitter concerning use effect recently uh, when Dan Abramov posted about saying that he's going to be writing the new use effect documentation, which is like the most complicated hook in React by far. It's where all of the where all of the mistakes inevitably happen um, because it can run any amount of times um, and it's where people seem to put basically everything all logic for the app seems to live in use effect now or at least triggered from use effect but it's because you can subscribe to anything in there and just trigger stuff to happen it it feels like a natural place that you would do stuff um but yeah anyway he's saying that basically don't do that um and there's lots of other people saying other things you definitely shouldn't do uh, but one key thing that was raised many, many times is async and promises, because this is the number one thing that use effects are for. I think I don't know if it's actually in the React docs, but it's yeah, it's so common that people would do that exact pattern. OK, so let's flip over to the code and we will implement uh, the original way of talking to an API in React. And then we'll do it the Joe type way straight after. Let's flip over. Here we go. Nice. So I've got a very, very basic Vite uh, create React app just for the intents and purposes of doing 
a basic demo so we can play with some React. Uh, I've got two Team Mux panes, first one code, second one server. In the server, I'm just going to kick it off and do a pmpm dev, which is just running feet uh, to clear that terminal. And then we will swap over to the browser and you can see this is our beautiful, very, very basic create feet react app. Cheers. Back in the code, let's flick back over to here. I'm just going to open up the main source.app.tsx file. Uh, in here, you can see it's just incredibly bare bones. I stole the image from the readme for the little guy because that makes it feel a hell of a lot more like we're playing with that actual tool. And that is the only thing in here. There is nothing else. So I have the URL of an API, which um, is basically just a lorem ipsum generator. It will return us back a list of strings. Uh, res is going to be just a list of strings. Uh, we're going to write a asynchronous function, which will go to that API and just fetch the data um, and return us wrapped in a promise because it's async, the response, lovely. Uh, Copilot being very helpful there. It's going to go and do all the legwork for us of fetching the from the URL and then passing the JSON response and returning us the data. And it's we're telling TypeScript exactly what the type is going to be. So the original way, the original way, the bad practice way, uh, the, the people have done it since time immemorial with React, since hooks became a thing, uh, is to use a use effect inside of your use effect you would do a get data exactly as copilot is cleverly deciding uh res would then come through and then you would set the res to a data setter which would be up here inside a use state let's just accept that and we'll do it with an empty dependency array empty array which means that it will only happen on first render well, it will happen more than that, but we're going to say that it only happens on first render. In strict mode, it does it does it twice, I think, which is a bit of a bone of contention. But there you go. So this is basically going to say, when we mount, go off and start running this promise. When the promise is done, go through and, and uh, update our React-scented variable here, data, um, and then we get that back. So then I'm just going to, just so we can see something in the browser, I'll go and get data. Uh, map the sentence into a p tag uh, with a key which is just going to be the sentence uh, so that react knows which item in the list we're dealing with and then the sentence itself lovely okay and then so if we switch over to the browser we can see it nice we've got a sentence came back no problem so this does work it does work and it's fine um it just isn't particularly scalable uh if you're doing this all over the place yeah, things can get out of whack and infinite loops are one of the most annoying and difficult to debug things, especially when you've got many, many layers of components in a big React application. I spent many hours and days trying to debug where a performance issue is happening and it's just because a user effect was subscribing to something else that was talking to something else that was doing something async and then it was getting it back and then updating something else. Yeah, it's just, it becomes a mess. So it's, it's known to be an anti-pattern, uh, but there isn't really like, a canonical drop-in solution to it there is no currently use async hook which would just let us go and do our get data like this is basically what we want isn't it like we'd want to go and get data and then that that's that's the ideal api but it doesn't exist so if we clean this up then we'll keep our function to actually go and get it because we know this is good this is completely fine um, i'll even just go and i'm just going to drop it down just further down the page so we can really focus Focus up here. This is where the where the new stuff is going to happen. So, uh, Jotai offering us a drop-in solution. Let's go and import from. Typing is a difficult art. One I have not mastered yet. From Jotai, we are going to import a atom. Uh, and inside of our atom, we're going to do. Uh, get data atom it's going to be an atom which uh, wraps our async call 
Awesome. Why is there no Jotai? It would really help if I had installed Jotai. Let's just do a quick PMPM PM add Jotai. Damn, that was fast. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's all good. Um, does this now know what this is? It knows that it's an atom of promise of res. Nice. Okay. Uh, another import from Jotai would be the use atom hook. We're going to go and uh, let's just say, yeah, yeah, let's just go and let's just do it exactly like that. And let's find out what is data. Data is res never. Okay. So the never is referring to here. That's that's never going to exist. So if I if I was to put anything here, if I was trying, if I'm trying to assign it. This should be allowed as a as a variable name, but it's I got a TypeScript error saying I haven't got a TypeScript error. Is TypeScript not really working? Okay, well this should be a TypeScript error because if this is never, it's never allowed. It's never going to be a thing. So the only thing is this data. Um, this is actually type safe. This is looking like it's like it's all good actually. So if TypeScript says it's happy, then I guess we're happy. Should we find out in the browser? <laughs> Error. Okay. Um, let's just get the debugging hat on. I feel like this is a hot module reloading issue more than anything else. Because if I just do a... <laughs> See, this is an issue where I'm an idiot and I didn't restart the server. If we just go back to the terminal. After we installed the package, we should definitely have done a pmpm dev. Get the Veep server back up. Get it back up and running. Switch back to the browser. Feel like an idiot the whole time and then reload. Here we have it. Here we have it. Here we have it. It's just there. It's just there. It felt it felt like it felt it felt magical. It just felt like it was just there the whole time. Let's uh, implement some throttling. Okay, so here I have the network tab. Let's just make this nice and small. Look how responsive that is. Incredible, incredible responsive work. Oh, I'm in the way, but it's it's just he's happy. He's poking in from the side of the screen. I'm doing a similar thing actually. Jot, jot I. Um, cool. Let's just let's clear this out. Um, let's so you in in browser dev tools. Good thing to know about. Go to the network tab. This is where you'll see all your requests. Let's just do it normally. Let's just do a, a refresh of the page. Uh, sorry, I'm slightly off the page here, but we've got some stuff happening. This is like V specific stuff, and then this one here is the uh, the actual payload request going to that API. Get told us it was a 200. We've got the payload that we sent. The preview of what came back. The actual response itself. Lovely just simple good stuff simple good stuff uh what was i talking about yeah throttling so up here uh we're going to disable the cache and in throttling you can do some like you can't see the drop down interesting we're going to do slow 3g very slow 3g um and then what we're going to do if i bring this back over so we can see it so we've got this um list of sentences and then when we do a reload this should take a while now going to happen white screen don't walk into the light damn this is slow is this what 3g was like so long ago now what's going on in the network tab how long is it wanting to take It did it, but it did it before the images. <laughs> uh, okay, so maybe instead... Oh, custom. What's custom? Maybe we'll dig into custom at some point. Maybe there'll be an episode on custom throttling. Who knows? Who knows? There's so many possibilities. Okay, screw that. One thing you always need to remember to do, which I have forgotten so many times, is to disable the throttling. Take the throttling off. Put the cache back in. You're going to want it. Uh, let's close that off. Okay, so back in the terminal. Back in code. Here, this is just a promise. This is just a promise. We're going to do some jankiness just to make it seem like this is taking ages. 
Okay, so we're gonna go and make a new promise because a promise is just a thing, it's a constructor. We're gonna await, I know we're gonna await it straight away, so it's fine. Uh, the first argument of the promise function is res. Uh, we can make it wait one second or we can make it wait 10 seconds. So it's gonna hit this point, it's gonna wait for 10 whole seconds and then it will return our data. So uh, it's reloaded. Let's go back to the browser. Why are we on? We're on a white page. We're on a white page. What's going on here? Reload. 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 What's going on? It, it feels like it's still 3G. Right. Does it hang the page? I think it does. I think it needs suspense. That's probably why it said needs suspense. It actually hangs until the whole thing happens huh maybe this needs to be like a next app then <laughs> so we can just use suspense does it react what what version of react is this back to the baggage json what version of react is this 18 suspense is good of 18 all right i don't know we'll give it a try off we go import from react suspense Suspense. So what we'll do is we will abstract this bit into a component. Um, I'll do it right above here. Function data component. Great name. Great name. Solid name, Connor. Well done, mate. Uh, we'll move the data into the component. We will grab the data. We will wrap it in a fish. We will wrap it in a fish. There we go. A fish. You know about the fish? If no data. I mean we could do the loading, but you can do you can do the fish. I am a fish. Handy stuff. Handy stuff. Okay, cool. And then so then this will have suspense. Oh yeah, maybe we can do the fallback with the loading. That's what we want. Yeah, that's that's Good stuff that is. That's really good stuff. Uh, so we don't need to do that then. We can just return. No, we just just it knows about it. It knows. It's clever. Uh, in the data component, I think we're 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 doing some we're doing something. We're doing something. I'm intrigued to see if this will work with V just out of the box. I'm even going to do a fresh <laughs> pmpm dev soap blazing fast um, and then we'll go back to the web browser it did it <gasps> suspense uh, let's just close the dev tools and there it is ready 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 reload loading 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 you have to wait 10 seconds for this ding da ding da ding da ding da ding 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 da ding ding da ding Jotai. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been. What are we even going to call this? Aiden, async. Jotai. Async work.